All right, my friends, with great excitement for Ryzen, similar to what I did with three generations of AMD Ryzen 7 recently, I'm presenting you pretty much the same test, but with Ryzen 5 instead. So we are pretty much looking at and comparing three years of Ryzen. To be exact, it's the Ryzen 5 3600, 2600 and 1600. Please be aware that we are talking of the original version of the 1600, not the newer AF version. Furthermore, I've decided against the X versions, since I personally find Ryzen 5 non-X queues to be the more reasonable choice from a price to performance standpoint. Just as with the previous Ryzen 7 video, I had actually planned on releasing those videos sometime in summer or autumn of 2019, but obviously that didn't happen. So this might not be that relevant anymore in the year 2020, but since Ryzen 4000 is still quite a few months away, I thought, why not? Maybe there are some of you that would enjoy a video like this. Of course, it needs to be said that I decided to completely ignore pricing. This is not supposed to be some kind of purchasing guide whatsoever. It simply is a quick comparison to get a better view on what has actually changed with Ryzen 5 in the past three years. Aside from that, the pricing is very unstable anyway. It's unavoidable that some of you will come back at me stating how wrong I am about pricing, that it can be had for much less or is much more expensive than I stated. You get the point. But enough of that, let's get to it. Now to refresh my mind a little, here's a quick comparison of these specs. What I've noticed is that across all three generations, from generation to generation, there's a 200 MHz base clock increase. It's exactly 300 MHz when talking about the turbo clocks. Big differences can also be seen in the manufacturing process. With the 1000 series, it's the 14 nanometer process. For the 2000 series, it's 12 nanometers. And finally, with Ryzen 3000, we are getting those glorious 7 nanometers. As it was the case with Ryzen 7, year after year, improvements were made on the memory controller, not only allowing for higher memory clocks, but better stability and compatibility in general. It's not a secret at all that the first generation of Ryzen had some trouble dealing with quote, higher clocked exotic RAM, end quote. Luckily, after each year, things started to look better, and with Ryzen 3000, we finally come to the point where we can say there are no memory issues anymore. Well, of course, there are some exceptions, but you won't come across those that often anymore. To top things off, third gen Ryzen also comes with twice the amount of level 3 cache. But now to the benchmarks. To avoid any confusion, I'll let you know right away, all was tested with the same exact RAM clocked at 3200 MHz paired with an RTX 2080 Ti. And now, enjoy!
Similar to what I had to say in my Ryzen 7 comparison, I kinda have to repeat what I said. The past three years, a lot of things have changed with AMD CPUs. Only now, when putting all three comparable models on a list or rather on the same chart, I noticed how big of a performance difference there is between them. Starting with the multicore side of things, generally speaking where AMD is currently best at, looking at those results when dealing with multicore workloads, you quickly notice there isn't really that big of a difference between first and second gen Ryzen. I mean there truly are performance gains over the 1600, but simply not as extreme ones I or many may expect or expect. Expected. The jump is much bigger from the second generation to the third one. Nothing short of amazing if you ask me. So for content creators that don't want to spend a lot of money on a CPU, a fantastic deal. But let's be honest, most of you that purchase a CPU in this price range only want to do one thing with it, gaming. Even in this category, the Ryzen 3600 has improved by a lot and clearly outperforms its predecessors. Although I clearly have to point out that all the three tested CPUs are capable of delivering a smooth gaming experience. But you also have to face the fact the 1600 is the weakest out of the three and has some issues keeping up with a beast of a graphics card that the RTX 2080 Ti clearly is. Were you to go with a slightly less powerful GPU, the gap between these three CPUs certainly wouldn't be as wide as it is now. It however doesn't necessarily just come down to the average frame rate. That alone won't get you a good gaming experience. We have to pay some attention to those minimum FPS too. The 1% lows certainly are significantly lower with the Ryzen 5 1600. The 2600 is a great balance and offers much better 1% load numbers. While it sure can't keep up with the 3600, nonetheless, even when paired with a 2080 Ti, I personally can't complain about the gaming performance. Mind blowing are those temperature results though. By far the hottest out of the three is the 3000 series CPU. They were all cooled by a 240mm deep cool AIO liquid cooler. The two older models in my test didn't even get to the 50 degrees Celsius mark. It however also needs to be said that the 3600 does consume slightly more power than its predecessors. But given the performance uplift, no doubt it still is the most efficient one out of the three. So it sure is impressive what has changed over the past three years in the world of Ryzen. I didn't expect there to be that much of a difference. Now all I hope is that Intel will soon offer something similarly as good, something that will make a serious impact. Just like Ryzen did. Because don't forget, competition leads to innovation. With that being said, thanks for watching. I hope to see you back when I have my next video up.